Welcome to another action-packed episode here on Honda Racing TV, where we will be bringing you the latest from the racers, from the world of two and four wheels. We chat with world superbike rider Leon Camia on his switch to Honda. We find out about the new World Touring Car Championship and meet the drivers of the new Honda Civic Type R race car. And we get the lowdown on MX2 rider Hunter Lawrence. Leon Camier is no stranger to Honda, having won both the British 125cc and the British Supersport Championships with them. Now he is back with the manufacturer racing in the World Superbike Championship. We met up with him to see how he's getting along with the new team and bike. Yeah, I have quite a bit of history with, with Honda. Obviously, the first 1-5 to five championship I won was with Honda. Managed to win the Supersport Championship with Honda and then moved up to Superbikes as well, which we had a really good, successful first year and a good introduction to Superbikes. And then, yeah, to be honest, the traits of the Honda from what I remember in Superbikes haven't really changed that much. So, you know, the strong points are still the strong points and the chassis works really good. I have a good, a good feeling with it and just trying to keep improving, working on our weaknesses. With the season opener for 2018 taking place at Phillip Island in Australia, Leon was immediately on the pace of practice. He qualified in fourth and showed impressive speed and gold moves on track to end the weekend with sixth and seventh place finishes. It was the next round in Thailand where Leon's stunning pace saw him on the front row after qualifying in third position. After battling with Kawasaki's Tom Sykes in the opening laps, Leon narrowly missed out on a podium on his Honda Fireblade SP2 race bike, finishing just 0.8 seconds behind Ducati's Chaz Davies. Leon's steed for this year is the Honda CBR 1000 RR Fireblade SP2, which is largely based on the road legal homologation special version. It features technology from Honda's RC 213V bike, raced by MotoGP champion Mark Marquez, specifically with regard to the way the engine is cooled around the cylinders. The pistons have an exclusive design to the SP2, as do the slightly larger valves, while the camshafts are lighter too than a regular fireblade. It definitely has the overall package to be going for podiums during 2018. The Fireblade's good to ride, to be honest. There's a lot of strong points, especially braking and entering the corner. It's really strong. I have a lot of feeling with the chassis, which is really good as well. There's still a few points we need to, to keep improving, for sure, turning middle to exit the corner, but all in all, it's a really friendly, easy to ride bike. And yeah, it's just a case of uh, keep trying to ship away to improve all the time. After their strong finish in Thailand, next up was Aragon. And with a new electronics package on the bike, the team were looking to target the podium. We, we've got to do as much work as what we can in the morning and really understand the direction we need to go with electronics and chassis. There's a lot to work on for this weekend to, to get it right, you know. It's, it's not an easy transition with electronics we're making and, and chassis-wise, so yeah, we'll see, step by step. Unluckily for Leon, his race ended on lap three with a racing incident. With rib fractures and a long contusion putting a premature end to his race weekend, he is hoping to be back soon to continue his promising start to the season on board the Honda Fireblade. We'll catch up with Leon later on this year on Honda Racing TV. Twenty eighteen sees new rules, new regulations, and a new name for the World Touring Car Championship, as it becomes known as the WTCR. 
But why the changes? We went along to the launch to find out and to meet the drivers of the new Honda Civic Type R TCR. Obviously a big difference between WTCR and WTCC is that WTCR is for customer racing. Um, in the past, Honda had a factory team in WTCC and uh, today Honda is here to support its customers. And um, this is really important for us and uh, it fits perfectly in our strategy. We like uh, customers racing our products and obviously uh, with WTCR we have two strong teams here we have uh, All Inkel uh, Milch Motorsport, a German team, and Boots Engineer coming from Belgium. Uh, both of them selected to race Hondas this year, and of course we are very pleased about that. I think WTCC needed that kind of evolution. So the fact that we have now three races per weekend, we have more track time, we have um, 26 to 30 cars on track, also much more similar cars. The fact that you cannot develop so much, you have uh, cars that are much more closer to each other with a very high level of competitivity in terms of drivers. So I'm 100% sure that the show will be much, much better, much more uh, fun for the fans. And uh, also for us, driver-wise, I think it will be, you know, you, I don't think you'll see anybody dominating the whole season. You know, you can do a pole position one weekend, you can be maybe 15 or 20 of the next weekend, which didn't happen in WC for many years. So um, I, I think you'll have a, a, lot of sh a lot of more uh, surprises and a, and a big show. Um, some drivers will maybe will get frustrated about that, and that's good. You have to be, be a bit more patient and aggressive when it counts, and you know, smart whenever it counts also. Uh, the Civic Type R is very close, TCR is very close to the Civic Type R road car. Um, and um, we, we like this kind of competition where uh, a manufacturer can really show the base strength of, of their cars. And in our case, we are quite confident that the Civic will be quite a good car to have this year. So overall, there is a little bit less power, which you can feel, but I think the public won't notice. The overall driving of the car is still very, very tricky and uh, very typical of a touring car. But the base that we have from the Type R is already at a very high level of competitiveness. And this car has been made by Yas, but it's based on a Type R car. So it's, it comes out of a production car um, and a lot of parts are, are more standard, if you want. In order to maintain a, a lower budget, a more accessible budget, um, the set of rules that TCR has is much more controlled in, in, in terms of uh, what you can develop or what you can't develop. The evolutions were much easier, so we have now a very strong product and the fact that you'll have you know, 26 to 28 cars on the, on the track will make for an even better show. Le Mans, old friend. And so, we meet once again. It's been 40 years since our first win. And yes, there's been some change. But the dream, that, still remains the same. A dream that requires our strength and courage. A dream that requires our racing knowledge. One that fuels our racing spirit. You are where legends are made and where our roots run deep. The 24-hour tunnel, the toughest endurance race in the world.
day and night, you push us to our limit. And yes, we had our moments. But when we reminisce, we wouldn't change a thing. Because all these moments have made us who we are. And racing is in our blood. After all, it is what we do. And we will never stop until we've made it to the end. Thank you for challenging us and igniting our racing spirit. But most importantly, for making us grow stronger. Until next time, Le Mans. Twenty eighteen sees the very talented Hunter Lawrence joining forces with Team Honda in the MX two class for the MXGP World Championship. We meet the young Australian who could be a major threat in this year's MX two title chase. I want to be world champ, that's, that's the goal, that's what everyone's goal is. Yeah, we're doing everything we can to, to achieve it, but yeah, we've got to take it one race at a time and be fit and healthy every weekend. As a family, there's a lot of things we've gone through that no one knows. For us, it's extremely difficult to just live in Europe. We haven't done anything the easy way since we've been here. You know, everything's been the hard way, so uh, it's, it's good for character building and makes you tough. Coming from Australia, we always have so much sun, and on the days that the sun does come out, it's generally colder than the days that when it's, it's not sunny, you know, and it's three degrees and it's mizzling rain and feels like minus three at Lommel and you're doing your motos, I mean, it makes you tough. Yeah, the Honda CRF250, it's a new bike. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I love the thing. It's, I mean, if you're a young bloke like me, you know, it's got the over rev and the top end to give you what you're after, you know. And then if you're a, just an old weekend warrior, just looking for a bit of fun on the weekend, it's got smooth power down below. And then if you want to go faster, you can rev it a bit more. So, I mean, as far as a production bike, I think they've done a real good job. Working with Livia Lancelot's been pretty cool, you know, she's still hungry to win and yeah, we get along with everyone on the team, you know, we have a, a small team and it's good, you know, it keeps uh, the spirit close and everyone gets along. As far as my ambitions for, for my career, we, we just want to win as much as possible, that's just what any guy wants to do and uh, if your dreams aren't big enough to scare you, then they're not big enough, you know? So, I mean, it keeps us working hard and keeps us humble, you know? We're still a, a small fish in a very big pond, so. First one on our bucket list is, yeah, world title, you know? That's what we're here for. We're aiming to jump over the fence clear and well and not hit our knee on the fence, you know? That's where we're giving it the best shot we have at this. Obviously, after this year, America, you know, that's uh, it's next year, so I'm not worrying about it too much now as I have to be fully focused on this year. But yeah, you know, I want to win in America as well. You know, that's, that's the dream and that's the goal. It's easy to say here 
I want to win this and that, but you know, it's all the hard work behind the scenes and that no one sees and the struggles and the sacrifices. So I mean, that's no one likes hard work that much, but it's what we do and we do it for the passion, you know, that's just, at the end of the day, it's all for the passion, so yeah. Well, that's it guys from Honda Racing TV. Thanks for joining me and stay tuned for more episodes right here on HondaProRacing.com.